Hi. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about your semester project. And for your semester project, I'm asking you to create a marketing plan. Uh, a marketing plan for an organization near and dear to my heart, uh, our own Lorain County Community College's business division. Marketing plans and, and plans in general are important for several reasons. First of all, it's always a good idea to think a problem through before you try to solve it. Um, I've heard jokingly uh, someone say that, that some organizations take uh, the uh, approach of ready, shoot, aim. Uh, think of the planning phase of a project as being the aim phase, where you stop and you think about what you're going to do before you actually go ahead and do it. And that's very important. Uh, it's always a good idea to, to um, have thought through a problem completely before you try attacking it, before you actually roll up your sleeves and, and get to work in, in attempting to solve it. And a plan is one way that, that you can, uh, one, one way that you can think through and document the process of you thinking through a problem. Um, you document it for a couple different reasons. First of all, it allows everyone to sort of get on the same page. Um, in big projects, you might have a bunch of people working on a project. Certainly, in the case of a marketing effort, um, you may have people from the marketing department or maybe even from an outside marketing firm working with people inside the organization. And in, in our case, Lorain County Community College's business division. What a marketing plan can do is sort of be shared between all groups so everyone has a good idea of what's being planned. So there's no surprises at the end. And in that way, the organization, the business division in this case, can look at the plan and say, well, I think this part's good, I think this part needs to be changed, rather than just going ahead and doing something that may or may not work to solve um, the particular organization's problem. I really stress planning in all my classes. I think it's something that's very important. I think it's something that people don't like to do. You know, in my programming classes, students just like to jump right in and start writing the code. Um, but it is important to plan. Um, and, and that's why in, in this class, the, the purpose of the class um, is focused on learning how to use the social media tools effectively, more so than learning what to click on to create a Facebook account. Most people uh, can work their way through that. So therefore, you're to create a marketing plan. Now, you're going to turn it in um, in two steps. Uh, the assignment actually has two parts. The first part is to turn in a rough draft. And although in normal terms, I'm, I'm very flexible about... Um, when assignments are turned in, you know, I can, I can give a little bit of slack a, as far as deadlines. For the rough draft, I'm going to be a little more strict. I'm going to be a lot more strict, actually. Because when you turn in your rough draft, which uh, you can check the, the syllabus uh, for the due dates, but when you turn in the, the rough draft, the rough draft will be given to another student to proofread. Um, not proofread, proofread is probably the wrong word, but to give a critique of, to, to give a peer critique. Um, it's, it's assumed that the rough draft isn't complete, um, and so, you know, the, the student that's proofreading it or critiquing it uh, is going to know that, that you may still be working on it. But the student, what they will do is they will see what you're doing and be able to give you possibly some good advice on, on how to improve it. Really, in my mind, it's a win-win situation. Um, you, uh, as, as someone creating the marketing plan, gets to get some good feedback from another member of this class. In addition, I will re be reviewing the, the assignments, and I will also be providing feedback. So you'll be getting feedback from two different people uh, on your marketing plan, and it's always good to get as much feedback as you possibly can uh, on work that you do. But in addition to that, uh, when you proofread, or I keep saying proofread, but when you critique the other person's um, work, you may get some ideas of your own. You may, you, you know, you, you can see another students work on the same project and get a sense of, of what they're trying and maybe that will convince you to try some new things maybe that will help you understand it. Um, one thing I found from teaching and I've heard other people say this is when you have to comment on or we have to teach or when you have to help someone else it really helps you understand the material as well so for you to go through the process of critiquing someone else's paper not only provides them with good feedback but you as the person examining the paper really uh, have to think about it and have to express in words uh, your feedback and it really helps you I think sort of understand and and uh, get a better sense for what it is you're trying to do. So in the first phase, which again check the syllabus for the due dates, you will uh, turn in your your work 
I will evaluate them all. I will also give them to another student in the class, and the other student in the class will also provide their feedback both to you and to me. Um, and you'll get points both for turning in the rough draft and for critiquing another person's work. So both parts are essential to get full credit uh, on the first part of the assignment. The second part is to, is to have the completed marketing plan. And I have sort of a write-up of, of, uh, of uh, what uh, the components of it are. I will spend a few minutes going through that and, 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 and going over in a little more detail. Um, it, certainly, if you have questions, feel free to ask me uh, about this or really anything in the class. But marketing plan, again, needs to be in some basic uh, format that is readable for a, a text paper. That is, it needs to be a Word document, a uh, rich text file, RTF. You can do it in Google Docs if you want to send it to me that way, or you can do it a PD in a PDF file. In addition to the paper, you'll also prepare a slideware presentation. That is, you'll prepare, for most people, that'll be a PowerPoint presentation. But again, you can do it in um, um, other, other forms of slideware if you prefer. For example, Google Docs um, has uh, the ability for you to create a slideware presentation. So you need to do both parts. You need to do the paper and you need to do the PowerPoint presentation. Ideally, um, if this were a class that met on campus, you would actually be giving the presentations to the class. But being an online class, you won't uh, actually be doing the presentation. That being said, assume that your presentation will be accompanying a speaker. So it doesn't need, really need to uh, you know, stand on its own by itself. Let's see here. Do pay attention to the design of your PowerPoint. Um, assume that, again, you would be speaking to accompany it. Uh, and make sure you follow guidelines for, for well-designed PowerPoint presentations. This is a good opportunity for you to practice those sorts of skills. Uh, PowerPoint is one of those tools that can either be used effectively or can be used in a, a very distracting way. And uh, I want you to have a little bit of practice developing a good, solid PowerPoint presentation that gets your message across that um, isn't filled with, you know, confusing graphics or um, hard to read, distracting sort of things. All right. Your paper should contain, first of all, objectives. In other words, I said I wanted you to create a social media marketing plan for the business division. Well, what are the goals in a marketing plan for the business division? What is the goal that the business division is after for? What do they precisely want marketed? Now, you could look at this uh, a bunch of different ways. You know, for some organizations, um, the goal might be to sell more of a particular product. All right. Uh, for a college, what could some potential goals be? Uh, possibly to attract new students, possibly to retain students, possibly to attract a certain type of student, you know, a traditional student, someone coming right out of high school, uh, versus a non-traditional student, that is someone maybe that's a displaced worker or uh, has been out in the industry for a while and wants to update their skills or, or whatever. The bottom line is you should identify some goals, all right? in order to uh, uh, start off your marketing plan. Figure out what is it exactly that the business division hopes to get out of um, this marketing plan through social media. Um, getting new students isn't the only possible goal. There's a lot of different goals and, and you should think about what you want to do. Obviously you need to do this first. Um, I think in a lot of cases, businesses look at social media and see that a number of other organizations are doing social media and figure they need to do it as well. And they start off on some sort of social marketing plan without really having a clear goal of what it is they, try, what they, they want to get out of it. Well, we're not going to do it that way. I don't think that's an effective way um, to implement a social media marketing program. What we're going to do instead is we're going to right off the bat think of what our goals are for the organization. Um, uh, what is it that they try uh, that they want to achieve through this marketing effort? Second thing that you want to do is you want to identify the target audience. Um, keeping in mind there could be several different uh, audiences that you're marketing to. 
Um, I alluded to two uh, when I talked about objectives. You could be marketing towards high school students. You could be marketing towards displaced workers. That would be two potential um, target audience groups. But again, it's not limited to just those two. Um, you know, use your imagination. Um, the, the, the target audience um, connects very closely to the goals. You know, that will help guide you to who your target audience is, exactly what is it that you want to achieve. Um, next thing I want you to do is review how similar organizations use social media. So look up and see how organizations like other community colleges, whether it be Tri-C or Lakeland or even throughout the nation, how other community colleges are using social media. Um, you do this for a couple reasons. Um, it's not just a matter of taking a look to see what they do to, uh, to, to emulate exactly what they do. You may look at what they do and decide that they're not doing a particularly good job of it. Um, either way, either by getting some good ideas to, uh, uh, for your own marketing plan or by seeing things to avoid, it's important to look to see what other folks uh, of similar organizations are doing. So what I want you to do is review some similar organizations and document that in your paper. I want you then for your target audience members, all right, when you define a target audience, I want you to define what some relevant goals are. All right. Um, for some, for, for example, a traditional student, an example of a re relevant goal might be to get the first two years of college down so that they can go to a four-year university and complete their bachelor's degree. That might be a relevant goal. Uh, for a displaced worker, it might be to enter into a new career, for example. Um, again, the target audience has goals. If your marketing isn't addressing those goals, um, people aren't going to view your advertising just to amuse themselves or um, just because you want them to. Really, um, to be effective in marketing, you have to present yourself as being able to help out people and, and satisfy their goals. And you can't satisfy the goals until you've identified them. So the next thing you do is you decide on the relevant goals of your target audience. The next portion of it, and again, I'm sort of just reading along with the entry that I posted, is probably the biggest portion, and it is a proposed content. And it will consist of uh, sort of uh, a set of information, who you plan on creating the post. In other words, uh, in the marketing, would you have students create the post? Would you have faculty members? Would you have administrators? Would you have the dean create the post? Who you would have create the post? Maybe some things you would... Um, have one person do, some things have other uh, people to do. How often you would post something to a social media site? Would you post weekly to a Facebook site? Monthly? Um, daily? You know, How often would you do that? How often would you plan to do that? A general description of the kind of content that you would include in the social media um, uh, uh, site that you're, that you're talking about. Um, most of my examples I've been you know, a lot of the examples I, I use, I talk about Facebook, but it could be any social media, you know. If you chose Twitter, for example, as one of the social media channels that, um, that uh, you would use as part of your marketing plan, what would the Twitter post be about? You know, what, are, what would a typical Twitter post include? Uh, if you talk about using YouTube as a channel, what would the videos be about? Would the videos be um, about you know, job searching skills? Would the videos be samples from lectures of different professors that different professors give? Would um, the videos be an overview of um, the uh, different career areas and, and what, you know, what each meaning in, uh, what, what each career means in the business division? You know, what do accountants do? What do marketers do? What do uh, networking people do? What do web developers do? And so on down the line. So, you need to describe for each channel that you pick um, for social media um, a description, a general description of the content that you'd include, and maybe maybe include some sample hypothetical uh, post it, uh, the sort of thing that you might want to post. Now, here's another important um, thing: the content that you describe should both serve 
the business division's objectives and serve the goals of your, uh, of your audience. Um, a marketing plan that doesn't do that, um, a social media marketing plan or really any sort of plan that doesn't do that isn't going to be effective. Um, We've identified as one of the first steps, or as the first step, what the goals of the business division is. Whatever social media content that we put into effect has to work to help the business division achieve those objectives. Uh, if not, why would, why would the business division bother doing it? Now, in addition to solving or, or serving or satisfying the objectives of the business division, uh, the social media content also should address, at least to some degree, the goals of the target audience. If you put out material on a social media site that doesn't address the goals, the needs of your target audience, the target audience has really no reason to pay attention to it. All right. In addition, you want to talk about potential issues, potential issues that you might run into. Um, You'll do that and you'll describe the content really for every channel that um, you have. Uh, in other words, you may say, for example, in your marketing plan that you think LC's business division should have a YouTube channel, a Twitter feed, and a Facebook feed. All right? Or maybe a Facebook feed and a you know, YouTube channel or whatever. So for every one of those channels, you would identify that list of things that I said. Who's going to make it, how often the post would be made, a general description of those, how, those, how that content aligns with LC's business division goals, and how the content aligns with the target audience goals and anticipated issues. Then you should document some sort of policy that, um, that should be held concerning transparency. Now I'm leaving a transparency... Um, as a topic for you to investigate. Transparency can mean a, a bunch of different things, but it is an issue. Um, being uh, transparent, being authentic, is something that you hear time and time again uh, when discussing uh, social media. So what, will your, what, what, what would your marketing plan propose that our business division be, uh, policy concerning transparency should be? Um, lastly, metrics. How would LC measure whether the marketing, um, uh, the, the, the social media marketing efforts would be uh, effective? Um, in, in business, again, there's sort of the planning phase. That's what we're doing for our project. There's the execution phase where you carry out the plan, all right, or, or implementation, execution phase. Sort of the last phase of complete the loop is you need to measure. Was your plan successful? Did it help you achieve the goals that you wanted to? If so, then keep up the good work. If not, you need to think about it and go back and maybe revisit or rework an earlier part of the plan. Now again, since we're not uh, necessarily going to implement uh, your plan and there won't really be a time for the complete cycle, we're not going to actually go and do the metrics, but you should suggest how LC uh, could measure how effective um, their uh, uh, social marketing uh, uh, efforts are. Just um, supply some sort of sense of how they would measure it. For all of these parts, be as specific as possible. Where I see a lot of students run into trouble in other courses where they need to plan is, is their plans may have some good insight into them but are very, very, very vague. Um, you need to be as specific as possible. You can see online uh, there is a rubric that describes how you're going to be graded, all right, and the things I'm going to be looking for, and um, you know how the points will be allocated across the different categories of things. All right, as far as your as far as your PowerPoint presentation goes, your PowerPoint presentation need not uh, encompass your entire marketing plan, but you should pick what you would think would be reasonable for a short presentation that you could give to people. Um, in the organization to explain to them what your proposed marketing plan is. Um, so it doesn't need to cover every single detail, but, but it should hit the highlights, and it should um, be the most important pieces, the most important components you feel are in your marketing plan. So you need both the paper and the 
the, the presentation to get uh, full credit. Um, I hope this helped clarify it, uh, clarify what you need to do for your project. By all means, if you have any questions about the project and, and what's required uh, and, and so on, uh, please feel free to send me an email or post uh, to the discussion board. Um, good luck, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what you come up with. Uh, if uh, folks that come up with some good ideas, we, we, you know, we may actually implement some of those ideas for uh, the business division. All right, good luck. Um, we'll talk to you later.